How's it going humans? My name is Hugh. I'm the owner of Human Made located in Calgary and today I get to show you guys how to make these cute little propagation tube stand things so that you can like grow a plant. This is basil. So let's go through the tools that we need to make this project and we can start building. So these are all the tools that we're gonna need to make these propagation stations. So let's break this down into some smaller sections and we'll go through them all. The project parts that we'll need is our piece of wood, which should be about 24 inches long, a propagation tube and eight screws. Safety is really important, so we want to make sure that we are wearing our gloves and our glasses at all times. We also want to make sure that we have our hearing protection for when we're using power tools. And a dust mask is a really good idea whenever we're sanding or using a power sander. For cutting, we're going to be using a miter box with a hand saw. We're also going to use a jigsaw, which is a powered saw and a jigsaw blade. For making some holes, we're gonna be using a power drill and we're gonna make two sizes of holes, one with a one inch spade bit and some other holes with an eighth inch drill bit. To go along with those is gonna be a screwdriver bit for the drill and we can also use a manual screwdriver. For sanding, we're gonna use a power sander and a piece of sandpaper that we can also use by hand. For measuring, we're gonna use a tape measure along with a combination square, and we're gonna to need to use our pencil to make sure that we can mark our measurements properly. The last thing we're gonna need is some clamps of varying sizes, and we might wanna use some glue when we put together our propagation station, so we can use that as well. First thing that we're gonna do, if you have long sleeves, we're gonna roll them up. If you have long hair, we're gonna tie it back get it out of our faces. If you don't have your gloves on, we're gonna put our gloves on like that. And the last thing we're gonna do, we're gonna protect our eyes with our safety glasses like that. So the first thing we're gonna do is take our piece of wood and our piece of sandpaper and give all of the corners and edges a quick sand just to make sure there's no splinters or sharp edges. So all of the pieces are going to be four inches long. So if you have a board that has a knot or something like this, that is okay because we have enough board that we can cut our four pieces out without using this knot. Or we can also use this knot and it ends up being a bit of a design feature in our propagation stand. So what we're gonna do so we're gonna mark out our first cut. So we're gonna take our tape measure and our pencil, and we're going to put a mark at four inches. And then we can take our combination square and we can make a line right there at our four inch mark. And we want this side to be our good side. So we're just gonna put a little X there so we know that we want to cut on this side of the line. So for the first couple of cuts, we're gonna use a miter box and a hand saw. So the first thing we wanna do with this is we want to make sure that it is clamped down securely to our table. So we're gonna put one clamp on one side and one clamp on the other side. So that's nice and secure. With that done, we're gonna take our piece of wood that has our mark in it, and we're going to line it up with the straight cut in our miter box. We're going to use some C-clamps. We'll line up our mark, and we'll put these C-clamps on to hold that nice and snug. And you do wanna make sure that you are using two clamps to keep things from moving and twisting on you. So with our miter box set up, we can now take our saw and be very careful because the blade is sharp. So we can put that through the straight cut on our miter box 
and line it up with our line. Now with our non-saw hand out of the way, we can start to make our cut nice and slow until we've cut all the way through our piece of wood. Now the piece we just cut can have some splinters or slivers, so we can take our piece of sandpaper and give the edges a quick sand to smooth them up. Next we're going to take our piece of wood and mark four inches. And we can use our combination square to continue that line around the corner. So with a mark on the top, now we can put our piece of wood into the miter box in another direction. This gives us another way to clamp it in place and to make our second cut. So we can use the miter box to make all four of our cuts, uh, but I want to also show you guys how to use a jigsaw. So a jigsaw is a power tool. Uh, some will use a cord and plug into the wall and others might have a battery pack on them. So the basics of the jigsaw is you have a, careful, they are sharp. You have a jigsaw blade that faces forward. And the biggest thing is you never, never, never want to touch the trigger until you are ready to make your cut. So some jigsaws will have a little safety switch that you have to push before you can pull the trigger. This one does not. Be very, very careful with the trigger when the tool is plugged in. So we're going to make the same mark as we did before at four inches and make our straight line for our cut. So with the jigsaw, we are going to be cutting off the table. So we want to use two clamps at least to secure our workpiece down. Again, if you use one clamp, it could be a little wobbly like this, and we don't want that. The piece should be nice and secure like this. So since the jigsaw is a power tool and it is pretty loud, you do want to make sure that you're either wearing these little foam earplugs, or maybe some earmuffs to protect your hearing. So I'm gonna put these on, and now we can start making our cut. So I have plugged in the jigsaw, and we can see that if I touch the trigger, it does start moving the blade really fast. So we need to be extremely careful that nothing is near the blade now. So what we're gonna do with the jigsaw is we're going to put it on our workpiece, and you're going to line up the blade with our mark so we know where it is. We're then gonna move the jigsaw back a little bit so that when we turn it on, it's not touching the wood. So then we can pull the trigger and make our cut. There we go. And you do wanna make sure never try and catch a piece of wood that's falling, just let it fall onto the ground. Now the last piece to cut is the bottom piece. Now I want to use this knot as a design feature, so I've made a line on each side at four inches. Now I can set up my jigsaw, move it back from the piece of wood a little bit, start the blade, and make my cut. With the first cut done, I can slide the piece down, clamp it down with two clamps, and make my final cut. So we're done using the jigsaw. So I've unplugged mine. So the blade right now, I wanna make sure still not to touch it. It is very sharp, and we've just done some cuts, so it is gonna be very hot. Don't touch the blade, ever. Now that we have our four pieces cut, it's time to figure out which one you want to use as the top of your propagation station. So I'm going to use this one. So next I'm going to use my combination square or a ruler to mark the center of this piece of wood by drawing a straight line from corner to corner on each side. So the next thing we're going to do is use a drill. So on a drill, there's usually two buttons on the side. So one on this side and one on this side. And they are, they move back and forth, and they are your forward and your reverse. So if this button on the left side of the drill is pushed in, the drill is gonna go backwards in reverse. And if the button on the right side of the drill is pushed in, the drill is gonna go forward.
we're going to take the center top piece and we are going to clamp it down to one of our spare pieces. So we'll do that just on the edge of our table. So with this clamped in, what we're gonna do is we are going to put our drill into reverse. So I have that side pushed in. I'm then going to put the center of our spade bit right on our mark. And I'm gonna slowly push it down in reverse. just until I break through the top layer of wood. This will give us a nice clean cut. So with that done, I can now put the drill into the forward direction and I can start slowly pushing down with the drill on. So with our hole drilled, we're gonna take some sandpaper and sand the hole we just made, just to make sure there's no splinters or slivers and to make sure our piece is nice and smooth. So now we have our top and we can see that our tube slides right in perfectly. So the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna mark out where we're gonna drill our holes on the top and the bottom piece so that we can put our screws through. So with my top and my bottom piece laid out, I need to find the center of where the screws are gonna go in the side pieces. So to do that, I can do a little trick and draw a line on my top and bottom piece using my side piece. Then I can find halfway between that distance. So these pieces are three quarters of an inch wide, which means halfway is three eighths. So with a line marked at three eighths, now I know my center line. Now I'm gonna measure in half an inch from each edge and put a little dot. And this is where we're gonna drill for our screws. So with our eight holes marked, we can set up our drill and drill our holes. Next, we're gonna put our scrap piece of wood back down and we're gonna clamp the piece that's gonna be drilled to it using two clamps. Now with our eighth inch drill bit secured in our drill and the drill in the forward position, we can drill through the top piece of wood into the scrap piece underneath on all four of our holes per piece. So with those drilled on the bottom piece, we're gonna do the same thing on the top piece. Next, we're gonna clamp our top or bottom piece to the side pieces on the table. This will help keep everything together when we screw in our screw. So this first screw, I'm just putting in by hand with a screwdriver. So you just need to turn it until the top of the screw is flush with the piece of wood. Now you can also add a little bit of glue if you want to. This will just help hold everything together. We can also use a screwdriver bit in the drill to turn in our screw. So with that installed and the drill in the forward position, we can slowly turn the screw in until it's just flush with the top of our workpiece. Now be careful, don't drill it in too fast or too deep or you could crack your piece of wood. So with this done this way, we're gonna turn it over can put our top piece on, we'll clamp it in place the same way, and we'll put our screws into this piece. So with our stand put together now, the last thing we need to do is give it one more sand. So we can use some sandpaper by hand to sand all of the inside edges and corners. We can also use a power sander. So power tools again are loud, so I'm gonna put on my earmuffs. Now sanding can also create a lot of dust, so it's a really good idea to have a bag attached to the sander to collect the dust or to have it connected to a vacuum. And wearing a dust mask or a respirator is also a really good idea to help and protect your lungs. So with our piece clamped down to the table, you might only be able to get one clamp in right now, but we're gonna put in at least one clamp and we can hold it with our hand. We're going to just give everything a quick sand with the power sander. Now you don't always need to clamp things down when you're sanding, but you can see here how much the piece moves around when it's not clamped down. So just be cautious because you are still using a power tool. And if the piece is moving around too much for you, then take that time, clamp it down, sand the area you need to and move on to the next spot.
Okay, so there we go. We now have our little propagation tube stand all done and ready to put a plant in. So we can see that they can look a whole lot different depending on what you do with them. This one I added some stain to to make it a dark color. So that's maybe something you can do later on with your parents. This one is just normal wood. And this is the one that had that knot at the bottom. So I think they all end up having their own unique look. And I think the best part is you get to make yours the way that you want. So go have some fun, draw on them, decorate them. And hold on, find a plant that you can put in it. This is basil. So I hope you had fun making these projects. I know I did. And a huge thank you to Skills Canada Alberta for putting this all together. And now it's up to you to decorate your stand and propagate a little plant of your very own.